Hi guys, and welcome back to our wonderful Thanksgiving through the month of November. And as you know, if you've seen the videos before, you know that I am sharing with you all of my family's favorite Thanksgiving meal dishes and recipes. And today we are going to do a recipe that I love and I've been making for years and years and years called Grandmother's Famous Cranberry Bread. And it comes from a wonderful book that I had when I was a child and enjoy it just so much. And it has become tradition that I read this to my kids, even though they're grown and older, they still love to gather around in the living room. And I sit and read them this book. And if you want to check that out, um, just make sure you see the video before this one where I will go into more depth on this book. It's so much fun. On the back is the recipe for grandmother's famous cranberry bread. And so that's what we're going to make today. All right. Now, we're going to get started by preheating our oven to 350, which we're doing now. And then you want to grease your loaf pan. This is this recipe is so easy, you guys, and it's so flavorful. It's so different than a lot of quick breads, and that's one of the things that I really love about this recipe. I've done this as, um, actually, for Christmas gifts for friends and family in the years gone by, too. All right, so our pan is greased, and we're going to set that aside. All right, now, our cranberries are chopped and set aside, and I've just done that in the food processor, so that's super easy to do. You just... Rinse them, drain them really, really good, chop them in the food processor until they're fairly small, and then set that aside. Okay, now getting into it, we're going to start with our sifted flour and our baking powder, our soda, our salt, and let's get that stirred together there. All right. Now, to make this easy on ourselves, this is going to go back into the food processor. This flour mixture here is just our dry ingredients so far. All right. And then into that flour is going to go our little bit of butter. And guys, don't, don't worry. You know that I'll have the ingredients for you listed down below, okay? So if you didn't catch everything that was going in, don't sweat it, okay? Now, that's gonna go in there, and I just like to get it going, coated with the flour before I get it started with the, with the machine, all right? Lid on, and we're just gonna pulse that in. Just a few times around, should have it done. And we can check it. Make sure that the butter is all pulverized down into small crumbs throughout the flour mixture. And, and we can see that it is. All right, so that's good. We're gonna empty that back into our bowl. Now, you can also do this with a pastry blender. That's what I've done in the past, but kind of nice to make it easy on yourself, especially when we're talking about Thanksgiving and there's so much to do anyway. Okay, now we're going to add our coconut sugar. And guys, remember, if you want to use white sugar in this, that's what the recipe actually calls for. So that's going to work beautifully for you. And it's going to give you a beautiful um, pale golden -y kind of color in your cranberry bread, okay? This is gonna come out a little bit darker, of course, using the coconut sugar, kind of like we used, um, as if we had used brown sugar. Okay, now our coconut sugar is whisked in. You got to remember your whiskey. Don't forget your whiskey. All right, now in goes our orange juice. And our egg. And our orange zest. We're going to beat that in.
And when it's all incorporated like that, and you don't have any dry places left from your flour mixture, in goes the chopped cranberries. Now, the, re the recipe actually calls for some raisins, some of the golden raisins to go in this. My family doesn't really care for raisins that much, or not everybody does. So I usually leave the raisins out and just go with the orange zest and the cranberries for the fruit and the flavor. And just fold that in until it's fully incorporated and then into our grease pan. Always want to have clean hands in the kitchen. You never know when you're going to have to use those God-given tools. Okay, and into the oven it goes. And guys, remember, that's at 350 for about an hour to an hour and 10 minutes. So you can go and do something else like a little longer or whatever while you're waiting on this one to get done. Okay guys, our cranberry bread is out of the oven. I let it cool in the pan for about five minutes or so. A straight edge right around the sides just to loosen it, make sure it's gonna come out. Turn it out onto a cooling rack and let it cool down. Now, you need to let it cool down most of the way just so that when you cut into it, it doesn't tear apart on you. But I like to, I like to cut mine when they're still warm. And I'll show you why. So mine is still a little warm in the center. Get you a nice, sharp, serrated knife, bread knife, and cut down through. Look, you can see the little flecks of cranberry and orange in there. Love that. And this is how I like to enjoy mine. With a little bit of butter just spread right on there. And you can see it's starting to melt a little bit because that cranberry bread is still warm. Lovely. Let's give it a little taste test, shall we? Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people don't like the heel, but I always like the heel because I like I like that crunch in my bites. So good, you guys. That tartness of the cranberry, it's so pleasant. It's not like it doesn't bite you back. You know what I mean by that? Like sometimes things are so tart, like a key lime pie, if you don't have that right balance in it, it's so tart that you're like, oh, yeah, okay, that's tart. This is not that way. This, you have just a little bit of tartness from there, that zest from the oranges coming into play, right? And it all comes together so beautifully, especially with that little bit of creamy butter on there. Just that little bit. Oh, it just brings it all together. You guys, I hope that you give this a try because this is a wonderful thing you can make way ahead, right? And keep it in the fridge. Wrap it up in a zippy bag or whatever. Put this in the fridge and then warm it up for your Thanksgiving dinner, or you can use it and give us gifts. It's so fun, you can have it ready when companies start to come into town, you know, for the holidays, and you can bring this out, and you've already got it made. So give it a try, and let me know how it works for you guys, and leave me a comment, and as always, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do that, because that really helps us out. And we're having so much fun sharing our Thanksgiving ideas and meals and dishes with you guys. I hope that that brings you joy and happiness and help in your lives as well. So we'll see you next time on Things Tina Does.